I'm continuing this morning a series on the life and ministry of Jesus as we've begun this year, a series entitled Follow Me. The, the idea being, as I've said every time, there are a lot of things that's about the life and ministry of Jesus that seem intimidating to us if we're honest with ourselves. You know, he's a guy, he's fully man and fully God, the son of God, walks on water, raises the dead, feeds 5,000, heals the blind, makes the lame to walk. I mean, there's a lot of things about the life of Jesus that seem intimidating. And yet, there are many, many um, characteristics, there are many dis disciplines of Jesus that we can emulate. There are things that we can do. We've talked about this, prayer, fasting, we've talked about worship, we've talked about giving, all of these things that Jesus himself practiced and also encouraged his disciples, which, you know, comes to us, to practice as well. So we've talked about these different things. This morning I wanna talk about one. I want to talk this morning about the idea of submission. Jesus was, in all characteristics of his life and ministry, submitted to the Father. He says that over and over again, and that's what I want to look at this morning. So turn, if you will, we're going to look initially at two different passages in Matthew. The first is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. This is going to be familiar to, familiar to you. This is the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, what is known as the Lord's Prayer. Look at Matthew, <coughs> excuse me, Matthew 6 and 9. Jesus, of course, is speaking, and he says, In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, this is the key, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now turn over just a few chapters to Matthew 12. Matthew 12 and verse 48. Matthew 12 and 48. Jesus' family has come to visit him during his ministry, and some of the disciples stick their head inside a house where Jesus is, and they say, hey, Jesus, your, your, your brothers and your sisters are outside. They want to see you. And this is how Jesus responds, Matthew 12 and 48. But Jesus answered and said to the one who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And Jesus stretched out his hand towards his disciples and said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever, look at this, for whoever does the will of my Father. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you and we worship you this morning. We ask that you would continue to move among us. Let your Holy Spirit just move among us, challenging and convicting each of us. We want to live submitted lives to you. We honor you, we praise you, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I started last week with a story, a historical story, and uh, I realized as I was planning my sermon this week that I was going to start with another one. So there you go. You learned something two weeks in a row. Uh, last week, we, we talked about Constantine, Emperor Constantine. Th th this morning, let me give you something this morning as we begin. Shortly after 600 AD, so you're talking about, do the math, 1,400 years ago, 1,400 years ago. So around 600 A.D., a new religion began to sweep the Middle East, and it began to spread like wildfire through the Middle East. It began in the Sinai Peninsula around 600, 615, uh, I, did I say B.C.? A.D., excuse me, 600 A.D. So it began to sweep through the Sinai Peninsula, and then it began to spread throughout the entire Middle East. It was, of course, the religion of Islam. It was begun by a man named Muhammad who claimed to receive revelations from God himself. He wrote these revelations down and they eventually became known as what we know now as the Quran. But for a long time, that religion did not have a name specifically. For a long time, they were known as Mohammedans, Mohammedans, some, some similar to how people that follow Buddha are known as Buddhists. So for a long time, they were known as Mohammedans people who followed Muhammad. But it wasn't exactly right because Muhammad wasn't claiming to be a god, simply a prophet. Over time, the religion took on the name we now know as Islam. The reason that it took on that name was because that was what Muhammad and his followers would yell as they advanced and attacked cities that believed differently than they did. They screamed the word Islam, which means submit 
or more specifically, surrender. Surrender. And so that is what they yelled and screamed as they advanced uh, into battle to destroy cities and kill anyone who refused to surrender or submit. So it is interesting that that actually became the name of the whole religion. The whole religion means surrender or surrender to God, but surrender. That is not what Jesus is saying when he talks about the will of the Father in the New Testament. When he says, thy will be done. Jesus is not enforcing to the disciples that they must be submissive to the Father. He's not doing it at knife point. It's important to remember, you can define the essence of any religion by what the founder comes carrying. In Judaism, Moses comes carrying the law. In Islam, Muhammad comes carrying the sword. But in Christianity, Jesus comes carrying a cross. Jesus speaks of submission, not submission at sword point. Submission, how does Jesus submit? He submits to the will of the Father even to the point of the cross. It's a whole different feeling of submission. If someone pulls a gun on you and says, submit, that's very different than G what Jesus did in his levels of submission. That's what we want to look at this morning. Turn, if you will, to John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and verse 38. This is in the middle of a long discussion that Jesus is having with um, a multitude of people, a crowd of people. They're wanting a sign and, and so on. It goes back and forth, back and forth, but the key verse is John 6 and 38. Jesus is speaking and he says this, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. The will of him who sent me. Jesus does nothing outside of the will of what God the Father has given him he says I have done nothing I have not come to do my own will but to do the will of him who sent me that is so important we always talk about well I can't be Jesus because I can't walk on water I can't do this or I can't do that but listen to me all of us have the opportunity to live in complete submission to the will of the Father for our lives it's just that what <laughs> we we very very regularly choose not to do that that's the deal. It's not that it's not available to us. We regularly decide not to do that. We, more times than not, this is true, right? I have people come to me and say, well, I just can't, I just don't know what God wants me to do with my life. I just can't hear what God's call is for my life. As I speak to them and talk to them, more times than not, it, seems, it becomes obvious to me that they have heard, they do know, and they simply don't want to do it. It is not that we have, we are, it is not that we're deaf, it is that we lack the submission to obey. Jesus said, not only can I hear the will of my Father, but I do nothing except that which he told me. I remember when I was in like high school, those bracelets became super popular, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I'll give it to you. This is super easy answer to WWJD. Submit to the will of the Father. That's it. That's the, that's the answer. All, ev listen to me. Everything else in your life will fall into place if you will submit to the will of the Father. We make it so complicated. Submit to, in everything. I want you to stay in John. I'm going to show you two more. Look at John 8 and 28. Just skip over a couple of chapters. John 8 and 28. Jesus is speaking again, and he says this, uh, John 8, 28. Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, that is the Son, and that I am doing nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And he, that is God, he who sent me, God the Father, is with me. The Father has not left me, for I alone do these things that please him. So every action that Jesus did was pleasing to the Father. Look at what he says. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do these, always do these things that please him. You want to understand what God wants for your life? It's that. 
What is God calling you to do? Find those things and do them. We submit to the will of the Father. Now I want you to show, look, look at the next one. Look over to John chapter 12. John chapter 12 and verse 49. John 12 and 49, Jesus is speaking again, and he says this, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Look at 49, this is important. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak, and I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Look again at 49. I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. In those two, in John 8 and John 12, Jesus makes it extremely clear. I am not saying anything that is contrary to what God has given me, and I'm not doing anything that is contrary to what God has told me to do. I am speaking and acting and doing in the exact will of the Father. So the first thing about submission is this. We submit our actions to the Father, all of our actions to the Father. We submit everything, all words, all speaking, all movement, all doing. Everything is in submission to the Father. Now I'm going to be honest with you. This is a discipline that I believe is uniquely difficult for Americans because... We like independence. We're big, big fans of freedom, right? We don't like, I've, tra I've traveled all over the world. Nobody else makes flags or bumper stickers that say, don't tread on me, okay? I've been all over the world. <laughs> that, that's not, that it is a uniquely American thing. And I'm not even saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm not, I'm an American. I love America. I'm just saying it is, we love that Nobody's going to tell me what to do, right? They can have my gun when they pry it from my cold, dead hands, right? That's what, I mean, don't act like you, a bunch of y'all got that one on your truck too, okay? So don't, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong. I'm just saying that's who we are. Don't tread on me, independence, right? Down with the British, 1775, and all that good stuff, Declaration of Independence, Constitution, yeah, yeah, yeah. America, right? Right? That's who we are. It's okay. You can be in touch with that reality. America, right? I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a hilarious story. One time, uh, Courtney was cooking, uh, and she decided, um, this was years ago, that she was going to cook a, 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 an all-vegetarian um, meal, an all-vegetarian meal, so there was no meat involved in this. She was on a kick, and that lasted about two meals. So, but, but meal number one, Owen... Our middle son was about 11 or 12 at the time. So she comes in, show all the food, and there's no meat. And Owen says, Mom, there's no meat at this dinner. And she says, I know, it's a meatless dinner. We're going to just eat vegetables. And Owen says, bacon, America. And he gets up and leaves the room. <laughs> I, I wasn't even sure what he meant exactly. He just, bacon, America. And then he walked out. And I was like, I don't... Is he mad or, or happy? I'm not sure, right? But there is, that is us. That's our DNA, and it's okay. It's all right. Except here's the thing. We don't like anybody to tell us what to do. But then we let that bleed over into our spiritual dynamic with God the Father. And so God the Father says, I want you to do this, or I want you to go there, or I don't want you to say this, or I don't want you to act like that. We say, bacon, America, right? We do. That's what we don't. Listen to me. Jesus, the son, was in 100%, 100% submission to God the Father. He said that. There is nothing that I say that contradicts anything that God the Father has already said to me, and there's nothing I even do that contradicts what God the Father has told me to do. Everything I say and think 100% submission. Everything that I do, all my actions, 100% submission. We've got to get in touch with that. Now understand, he was, you know, he was like the son of God, okay? So I'm in touch with that reality. But we can do better. I can do better. What are all the things that God is saying to me? Don't say that. Don't do that. Don't act like that. Do say this. Do say that. Do act like that. How many times are we outside of what we know 
is the call of God the Father on our lives? What's our submission level? 5%? 12%? I, I, I don't want to guess what mine is, right? I'm the pastor here. I, I don't want you to guess what my level is. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> it can't be more than 30%, right? No, I don't want you to guess either. I'm hopeful I'm at 50%, but I have no idea. I mean, we've got to get back in touch with that. God says, this is what I want you to do. We do it. God says, this isn't what I want you to do, and we don't. Jesus said, there is nothing I say, nothing I think, and nothing I do that is outside of the will of the Father. So as we said, the first thing is we submit our actions to the Father. Now I want you actually to turn forward into the New Testament to the writings of Paul. This is the next thing here. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Somebody in here is like, oh, submission. I knew he was going to preach on this. Right? All right, very quickly. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 22. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as to the Lord. Glory to God. All right, so, right? <laughs> what? What are you mad about? I'm just reading the Bible. I don't know what everybody's getting upset about. All right? Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her so that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. All right, very quickly, I want to talk about this idea of submission. Submission could also be this. For example, let's say that I, let's say that I'm a college professor, and this is English 101, and you're all a bunch of freshmen in college, and I say, hey, this is what the grade is going to be, English 101. There's only one grade. It's a term paper that's due on the last day of this class. That's the entire grade. 100% of the grade is that. So I say, on the last day of class, you're going to submit your term papers to me. Now, you could attend every single session, answer all the questions, raise your hand, participate in class, and you could still fail the class. How? By refusing to turn in the paper. So when I say, as a college professor, submit your paper to me, what's a different term for that? Submit it to me or give it to me. So they, those words can be used interchangeably, and actually Paul himself does. So the idea of submission, now this is what has happened over thousands of years. You have, people, you have had people twist these scriptures into all kinds of knots in order to enforce what they want. Submission is not about I'm in charge and you're this and I'm up here and you're down here and da da da. It's not that. Submission is about this. We are in relationships with each other, and the relationship is a race to outgive each other. It is not about I'm in charge and you're beneath me. I'm in charge and everybody else is. That's not what submission is. How do we know? Because look back again. It says in 23, for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. Leave that up for me for just a second. As also Christ is head of the church. Where did Jesus become head of the church? On the cross. On the cross. So here's the thing. Let me just tell it to you guys. You want to be the head of your household? You want to be the head of your household? The Bible says it. You want to be the head of your household? Listen to me. You need to be the most submitted person in the relationship. The most submitted person. Jesus became the head of the church on the cross. He submitted in order to save me and to save you. He submitted to the will of the Father in order to, to shed his blood for all of us. The head of the family is the most submitted one. Marriage, relationships, it is a race to outgive each other. It is not a well... I. I used to play softball with a guy, and 
any time he played softball, he had to he had to let his wife go and do something later on that week because she watched the kids when he played softball. So he had to watch the kids while she went and did something. Not play softball, I guess, but do something. It always, I'm not saying that's bad or good. It just always seemed like an odd thing. Like they both have this relationship ledger and it's like, watch the kids, you know? And hey, I'm one ahead of you. I watch the kids. You owe me one. That is not what it's supposed to be. So the second thing is this about submission. We submit to each other. We submit our actions to the Father, but we also submit to one another. Submit to one another. Look, look back again. Look at 25, because this Paul, what I just said about submit and give, Paul does it. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and what submitted or gave and gave himself for her. We need to submit to each other, be in relationship with each other. Our actions, our thoughts, our words need to be in submission to God the Father this way. But once we get that in alignment, we need to submit to one another. It's about, it's just about being willing to sacrifice your wants and desires for the people that you claim to care about. I, have, I was talking to the guys last night at the men's thing that we went and did. I am the unfortunate uh, commissioner of a little upward basketball league here in town. It, it's, I'm going to be honest with you, it's the most horrible thing I've ever done. I, I've done a lot of things. <laughs> it's the most horrible thing I've ever done. I've coached all the time my kids were little. But this commissioner thing, everybody that gets mad about anything wants to talk to me about it. And I'm not really in charge. I'm just a volunteer dad that made up the practice schedule. But everybody, coaches mad because their teams aren't good enough. Parents mad because their kids don't play enough. It's awful. But do you know why I did it? Because they had to have a commissioner. And if they didn't have a commissioner, the basketball league wasn't going to happen. And Liam wanted to play basketball. Refereeing youth basketball games for three hours on a Saturday morning every Saturday is not my idea of fun. But you know what? I did it because I love the little man. I wanted him to play. I love him. The problem is we get the submission thing all out of whack. We say, well, I'm in charge. Everybody submits to me. Everybody does what I do. Husbands, you're the head as Christ himself was the head and gave himself for everybody else. In every relationship, not just marriage, in every relationship, Submit to each other. It's a race to outgive each other. Now, the final thing is this. This is the, the final submission is in Mark chapter 14. Turn back, if you will, to Mark 14. This is Jesus at the end of his life. He's gone with his disciples to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, waiting for his arrest. The arrest will lead to his torture his beating, his crucifixion, and his death. And Jesus knows it. He knows what's about to happen in the next 24 hours. Mark 14 and 32. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death, stay here and pray watch he went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him and Jesus said Abba father all things are possible for you take this cup away from me nevertheless not what I will but what you will this is the most important nevertheless in the entire Bible Jesus knelt over that rock and prayed until it says drops of blood came off of his forehead. He knew what was coming. Crucifixion is the most agonizing way to die that man has ever invented. And he knew it was coming. Not only was it crucifixion, it was separation from God the Father whom he had never known separation from. Abandoned by all his human friends, but that's to be expected. 
But as he hung on that cross, God the Father could no longer look at him. He had to look away because Jesus was full of the sin of all of humanity. And in that moment, not only was he going through the physical agony of crucifixion, he was going through the spiritual agony of knowing separation from the Father for the first time ever. And Jesus said, God, if it's possible, take this cup. What cup? Cup of agony, cup of suffering, cup of abandonment, cup of separation, cup of crucifixion, cup of death. Take this cup from before me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Nevertheless, not what I want, but what you want. The final key to submission is we submit our agenda to the Father, our future, our destiny, the stuff that we know we deserve and the stuff that we want. Jesus didn't want to go through it, and he said, I take this. What does he say to, to God? He even says in verse 36, all things are possible. He says, I know that you can do something else, God. All things are possible. You can do something else. Please take this cup. If it's possible, take the cup away. Nevertheless, I submit my future and my destiny to you. We have got to get in touch with that. The problem is that we're concerned. We're always worried about what God is going to ask us to do if we actually submit our agenda to him, right? Well, if I, if I actually, you know, if I actually get saved, if I actually do this, if I actually submit my life to God, if I actually do that, God's probably going to call me to be a missionary. I hear that all the time. I just think, I don't know if God needs that many missionaries. We can't all be missionaries, Right? But, I, oh, if, if, I actually, if I actually submit to the will of the Father, he might fill in the blank. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know what that's going to look like. Maybe if you submit 100% to the Father, everybody in your family and all your coworkers get saved. Why do we always think that God's going to put us through the ringer? Why do we always jump to the conclusion that God wants us to be a martyr? Maybe submitting to God the Father means that your entire family receives the restoration, forgiveness, and salvation that can only come through your witness. Maybe it's good stuff. Maybe if you submit to God the Father, you're going to start being blessed in your finances. Maybe if you submit to God the Father in everything, he's going to restore relationships that you thought were dead and buried. Maybe if you submit 100% to the Father, he is going to help you work through the pain of your past. Maybe if you submit 100% to the Father, you'll finally find levels of forgiveness that you've been searching for for three decades. Maybe if you submit 100% to the Father, you'll actually find freedom from those bondages and addictions that have held you in chains for your entire life. We always say, well, if I submit to the Father, I'm going to be this, and this is horrible things going to happen. Maybe the reason that we don't have the lives that we want is because we won't submit them to the Father. Maybe the people that we see and say, boy, I wish, that, I, wish I had that, maybe they're not doing anything different than we are, except they're more Submitted. Maybe. Maybe that's the key to the whole thing. Maybe that's the key to the whole thing. We make it so complicated. WWJD, submit to the Father. Not my will, but yours be done. We submit our actions to the Father. We begin to submit to each other. And then the, we submitting our agenda, our destiny, and our future is the final step. But as you begin to submit your actions, your thoughts, your words, then that begins to bleed over into your relationships with others. And you become to, a, a more giving person, a more submitted person to the people around you. And then finally, God says, Travis, I want you to do this. I want you to go there. I want you to submit to this. And we're able to do that because we've worked through those levels. So let me close with this. 
I want you to go back to where we started. Matthew chapter 6. Back in January when we were doing Breakthrough 2019, my dad came one night and spoke and we prayed through the Lord's Prayer. For those of you that were here and remember that, we prayed through the Lord's Prayer. He said something that night that had really stuck with me. I'd heard him say it before and I'd read it in the book that he wrote about the Lord's Prayer. But I just remember it really stood out to me that night. It is in verse 10, what we already read. Look at uh, Matthew 6 and 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is that idea of your, God's will being done on earth, on earth as in general submission. The whole world submits to Christ the King. That is true. That is true. However, I read from a new King James. Most of you probably read from some other modern translation, the NIV or the NASB or something like that. In older translations, specifically in the King James, in the old KJV, the scripture reads like this, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In earth as it is in heaven. What is earth? We are. From dirt we have come, and to dirt we will return. So maybe what Jesus was saying was, pray this, your will be done in me, in me. So often we pray these vague, general prayers. Oh God, do this in the whole world. Oh God, do this in the whole country. Right? How many of us pray for revival for the whole country? Oh God, do this in the state of Georgia. Oh God, do this in Barrow County or Walton County. But how many of us pray, thy will be done in earth? The revival, the move of God, the stuff that we want to see happens inside of us when the people of God are submitted to the will of God. The people of God submitted to the will of God bring about a move of God. That's how it works. Thy will be done in earth. In earth. We're going to close with a time of prayer at the altar. I've asked Luke and the musicians to sing that song, Those Who the Sun Sets Free Are Free Indeed. They're going to return in just a moment. I asked them to sing that because here is the key. Here's the connection. You want to be free? You have to be submitted. You want to be free? You have to be submitted. The Bible tells us you're going to serve somebody. You're going to be in, in basically uh, in chains. You're going to be in bondage to something. You can, Paul tells us that. You can be in bondage to the sin that, was, that you were in bondage to before, or you can be in bondage to Christ Jesus. You're going to be submitted to something. Do you want to be free? Do you want the blessings of God? Do you want the life that you feel like God has always promised to you, the life that you've been chasing, the freedom that you've been searching for? It, do you want all of that? It starts with submission. Those that the sun sets free are free indeed. That's true. But the freest people are the most submitted to God. The people of God, doing the will of God, bring about a move of God. I don't know what you've been keeping back from God this morning. I don't know what you've been holding back from him. I don't know what you've been refusing to surrender, refusing to submit. But as we pray, I encourage you to come to this altar and give it to him. Submit it. Give it to him. Do the will of God your Father. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You can get free, but to get free, you have to be submitted. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in your presence. And God, I just ask that your Holy Spirit would move among every person here. When I say amen to this prayer, I want to give you the opportunity. I want to encourage you to simply come to the front and submit that thing, whatever it is, 
It's unique in your life. Everybody's thing is different. Everybody's thing is, is unique. But whatever it is you've been keeping from God, whatever it is you've been refusing to submit, whatever it is you've just been unwilling to give to God, or maybe it's something he's been saying to you that you haven't wanted to do. Maybe it's not something you're holding from him. Maybe it's something you're refusing to do for him. I don't know whether it's something you're keeping from God or whether it's something you're refusing to do for God. Wherever you're at, submit your actions to God the Father and submit your agenda, your future, your destiny to God the Father. As Jesus said, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Submit to him this morning. If you will give him everything, I promise you, you will find levels of freedom that you never thought possible. Those that the sun sets free are free indeed. And it starts with submission. When I say amen to this prayer, I encourage you to come to the front and find freedom. In Jesus' name we pray.